Okay, so this is the third video of this uh, part one um, uh, of the structure of physiology assignment. Um, and we're talking about the uh, ability to connect the function of an organ uh, with the structure. Uh, and so far we've looked at this at the cell level where we connected the the structure of the cell, of a particular type of cell, with what its function was, and we looked at it at the tissue level where we connected a particular type of tissue with what its function was. Now we're at the organ level, and um, the, organ is, that we're, the organ that we're using as an example is the heart, and I've listed that there are two functions in particular that it performs, and I want to talk about the, the morphology or the structure that um, causes us to think about those particular types of functions. And so the first function that I want to say something about is the, is the function of the heart as a pump. And this is the function that you're familiar with um, and should be aware of. Um, and the other function that we're going to talk about and needs to go into um, space eight here is is the function is the function that it divides the blood flow of unoxygenated blood to the lungs. And the flow of oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. Um, so uh, that goes in the second uh, function thing there, uh, space eight. Uh, divide blood flow of unoxygenated blood to the lungs and oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. Okay. And the reflecting morphology uh, that we see uh, for the pump, the pump function is that we can see that the the heart has muscular walls and so here's one side of the heart and you can see its muscular walls here the right side of the heart is thinner than the left side of the heart um, and we can see that it pushes blood out into the pulmonary artery here um, so there's one side of the pump and then here's the other side of the pump and the walls are muscular and they can squeeze and that's performing the function of a pump but the other thing that's important is that most pumps have um, a mechanism so that the fluid that it's pumping doesn't move backwards and in the heart right here we can see in the right side of the heart uh, we have a valve that when the right side of the heart squeezes it doesn't go backwards and then when it goes out into the artery that it's going into there's also another valve so that blood doesn't flow back into the heart. And so uh, both the muscular walls and the, the valves reflect the function of the heart as a pump. I can see that it's a pump just by looking at its structure. And then the, um, the um, function of dividing blood flow, as we talked about, uh, you can see there in number 10, uh, division into right and left halves. I've got this structure here that separates the flow of blood through the heart into right and left halves. This right side of the heart here pushes blood out to the lungs, and this left side of the heart pushes blood out to the rest of the body. Um, so division into right and left halves reflects the function of directing blood to different areas. Okay, so um, you can pause the video here if you want to you know, make sure you get those things written down for your, your worksheet. Um, and then let's go ahead and go on to the next slide. And then lastly, my, my final example here is that I want to show how structure reflects function at the organ system level. And we've got three functions that we want to consider here. And... And we're going to say that that first function is physical movement of food. 
So that's a, a function that I want to be able to see how the structure reflects in some way. And so if I scroll down um, on this slide, I can see I've got a, um, a picture here of the wall of the stomach and you can see that I've got three layers of muscle in the wall of the stomach here and these are all designed to squeeze and mix and then push the food uh, in one direction here so as we uh, have food that passes into the stomach the musculature is going to be responsible for pushing that food through the the uh, stomach. So what we're going to say here is that the structure that reflects the function of physical movement of food is that we have a tube with muscular walls. Okay, that's the structure that reflects this function of uh, physical movement of food. Okay, the second uh, function that I have and again remember we're putting these in um, I'm putting the answers for these over here in the notes so that you can see what we're what goes in the um, the boxes or the blanks on your worksheet uh, the second function we want to say something about is breaking down food and there are many structures that we could talk about in the digestive system that accomplish this purpose the one that I wanted to to focus on is that the cells of the digestive system, the cells of the, the, the tubes lining the digestive system make substances that cause the foods to be broken down like enzymes and acid and uh, other things. And so what I want to say here for um, the structures that reflect this function, and this is a long one, so epithelial cells of the digestive tube epithelial cells of the digestive tube liver and pancreas um, secrete acid bile and enzymes respectively okay so the structure that represents this function is the the fact that the epithelial cells uh, of the uh, digestive tube, liver, and pancreas secrete acid bile and enzymes respectively. Okay, and then the third function that I want to say something about is the function of absorption of nutrients and water. Okay, so we're absorbing um, one of the functions of the digestive system obviously is to absorb nutrients and water and a structural thing that um, reflects this is the fact that we have uh, structural or we have um, we have absorptive special specializations of the cells lining the surface so if you look up here in this picture you see all of these little um, bristles on the top of the the cells lining the um, the uh, digestive tract for absorption and all of these little extensions of um, the cytoplasm of the uh, epithelial cells lining the digestive tract allow for increased surface area. You can imagine that I've got tremendously uh, increased amounts of surface area if I uh, uh, for absorption to occur over if I extend these little things uh, into the um, the environment of, that's of the material that's being absorbed. So these structures massively increase the surface area over which biomaterials can be absorbed. Um, and of note, one one thing that uh, we see medically is that in individuals with gluten sensitivity, because of activation of the immune system, these structures are 
altered, resulting in a variety of diseases or a variety of issues, including diarrhea and difficulty absorbing nutrients. So these are extremely important. Uh, if I don't have these, I can't absorb enough nutrients and um, I suffer some pretty serious issues there. So epithelial cells for the, the structure here, epithelial cells lining the digestive tube uh, with absorptive properties or let's say absorptive modifications. Not all cells have these things. So these are absorptive modifications. Okay. So just be aware that with the Nearpods, some of these will have the ability on the slide to actually scroll down and see uh, other things that associate with the main picture here. So this is the main um, slide that I want you to see, but I can scroll down on some of these and see uh, more detailed pieces of information and we'll see that a lot of the time here okay so um, see if we go to the next slide um, okay so that was actually the last slide of the um, of this video that I wanted for part one of the uh, structure of anatomy and physiology. So we will uh, conclude this video here and um, this will be the the end of this first participation assignment for the um, the structure of anatomy and physiology um, uh, uh, participation. And so uh, just to make sure that uh, you're aware of what you need to do before you can consider this first part complete, um, the computer will store the fact that you've gone through this presentation for me and uh, you'll need to turn in the participation worksheet for this first part and um, that will make it so that you've completed this participation assignment. Okay, so see you in the next participation assignment.